Hey guys, welcome to Divergent Dream. I'm Kaylee. I'm Lauren. I'm Christy. We're going to be bringing you analysis of all of the Horror Nights mazes, starting with the Terror Tram. Uh, but before that, a little bit about us. We are, um, I got my degree in cinema studies. Theater. Cinema and writing, yeah. So we know a bit about this stuff. We know a little bit about set and lighting and design and scare actors. And that's all the cool stuff that we're going to be talking about in this video. Uh, please like, subscribe, hit the bell if you want to see more of this. And also, check out our Patreon. We're going to have limited edition postcards only for this haunt season. So only the people who sign up now will get these limited edition postcards. And they will never be available ever again. Limited edition. Collectibles. <laughs> I have to say, like, this maze was kind of, like, on my level of which ones I would like to go see. It was yeah. at the very bottom, because yeah. I knew we were going to have to walk a lot. Yeah. It was like, we're on the back lot. It's, it's hot. It's, it's like a it's million hot. degrees. It was a million degrees, so I was like, oh man, okay, I guess we're doing this one now. Yeah. I, I was, it's, probably one of my favorites of the night just because it really transported us and it's like look we're bringing in this mm -hmm. whole new good. element. Yeah. I agree I think that like you know the terror term is always really popular and I think especially for people who are going to Horror Nights for the first time it's really exciting because it's a break from the other mazes it's totally different you're like on a ride because you're being transported by the tram, and then you have a thing. But I think that sometimes, like, especially, like, because I've been going for a really long time, sometimes I don't really look forward to it because if it's not really awesome, it's a lot of work to, like, go all the way through it, and it's not, like, there's so many breaks in it because there's, like, the break for the the base hotel, which I I love the hotel, but it's, it's like you go up a hill to get to it. Like, there's all of these pieces, and it can take you out of, like, we were just talking about being transported. It can actually, those breaks, if they're not done well, can actually take you out of the moment. And so it's less exciting because there's just, like, this complete, like, break in the moments, whereas typically you won't have that in a maze. You won't have, like, these segmented sections. Mm -hmm. Now, I feel like because this one was done so well, like, even though, like, you're out of the moment for a second when you leave the hotel, still, like, you have that archway with, like, the Black Cat Alley, and I'm, j I'm right back in it. I'm right there again. And I think that, um, that, yeah, so that immersion is so important, and I think with this terror tram, it was, it, they did a brilliant job. <laughs> okay, so... We were just rewatching the beginning portion of the Terror Tram when you first go on and they're playing that first video um, where they introduce Hollywood Harry and his show that he used to do, which is Kudos the Clown, which was a children's show. One of the portions I actually cut out is a section where he is trying to recreate that show. He's trying to make mm. the Kudos the Clown show and he kidnapped two of the tour guides and made them like little characters on his show. He like zombifies them and he does this whole skit with them. And I really feel like it was kind of a missed opportunity. I feel like uh, they went very kind of dark and real with it without going too gritty. Um, but then they also didn't ham it, ham it up. Like, it could have been really exciting, right? I feel like the whole premise of this mate, or of the, um, the oh, tram yes. was yeah. very hammy. Like, he's yeah. waiting for us when we arrive. There's the dark balloons. So it's like, you they have a clown. Cats. You have they a had clown. cat monsters. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's Cats the Musical. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, that would have been terror. so, like... That would actually have been scary if he started singing. I think that would have been the scariest. That would have been it. We would have been, <laughs> we would have been running out yeah. now. I kind of wanted to know why we were being let out there as well. Ah, because that it's fun. just kind of like we were That's... on the tram. Oh, we have this problem. We have the skeletons in our yeah. closet problem. And then she says, goodbye, good luck. And it's like. Well, why, why did you we, deliver us you here? Like, it? are you working for or with him? Because mm -hmm. that could have... Because she was, like, she was possessed too, right, essentially now? or Well, that's what I wanted to we know. We don't know. She... Uh... That's actually a really good point, because I feel like they did a, a great job of that with the Purge tra Terror Trams. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. When they did the Purge version of the Terror Trams, one of the things they did is that, 
Like, you know, in the Purge movie, you're, like, being led to your death. Like, they have all those parties for right. rich people to slaughter people. Um, and it's a whole thing. So we got that vibe of, like, we are being brought to um, the slaughter. Cattle and that was really cool. <laughs> And last time they had where, um, even though I didn't like the terror tram as much last time they did Hollywood Harry, they did it where he was technically taking over the tram. Like, he comes into the tram video, mm. and he's actually taking it over. So that was explained a little better. Mm -hmm. um, however, however, I still like this terror tram way better. <laughs> the old Hollywood aspect of it I loved, and I loved that they do that as, like, a an actual Hollywood studio. I think that's really important. Okay, so they, they did kind of explain it a little bit, like we are being delivered to yeah. Harry. I think it could have been yeah, stronger, why? though. Why? Yes. Why is she helping? That's yeah. what I want to know. Oh like, what is her motivation? You know, okay. <laughs> We're going to rewrite this real quick. We're going to rewrite this. She is the one who helped Harry kidnap her co, co kidnap oh, her co maybe she's jealous oh, no. of the co-workers. Yeah, like, maybe they got, like, maybe she's, like, you know, most of the the hosts are actors as well. So mm -hmm. maybe, like, they, like, she was in the mix and they were, like, I don't know, competing for a part and they got the part over her. Cut the competition. Yeah, like, I don't know if that's too complicated, but it would have been funny if, like, she's, like, actually in cahoots with Hollywood Harry. And, and this is, like, how she pays him. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, she, he keeps getting rid of the competition and she's actually been able to get some parts outside of um, doing the terror trams. Mm. Take that pitch from us, Universal. Use it. Yeah. You're welcome. It's all yours. <laughs> I love this, the way he was just standing there, like as we approach and he's just there and I like yeah. how they were able to reset everything so yeah. it felt like we were the first people there the night, it's very fresh. Yeah, so I agree with you on that completely. I think that that was like one of the most fun thing to just look over and see him just creepily like... <laughs> it was weird. I was like ready to go meet him. I was really excited. <laughs> you were ready to go meet him. I was, I was like, like yeah, yeah, clowns. Hollywood yeah, awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, clowns are clowns are creepy, but I it was a great clowns. effect. I do like that about Terra Tram. They always like very seamlessly, quickly, like are able to set up in place, even with the large groups they have to deal with. Mm -hmm. That pumpkin cutout, the one that's about to come up, is really cool. Yeah, the yeah. one where they have and and they have. What's great is it like hides the pumpkin scare actors. Like, oh, yeah. That's where they come out, and, like, it just feels like a set piece for him. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't feel like it's, like... I mean, it, you do see the curtain, but it doesn't feel like a big show curtain. So it's, like, it's not unexpected that they come out, but also, like, Hollywood Harry is directing your focus. Mm -hmm. Like, you're focused on him, and so when they come out, it's it's almost like a cool surprise. It's almost like... You know, they're off stage and just boom. Like, it's like you know, you, we should have known this was about to happen, but we were so directed on, oh, mm -hmm. what's he going to do? Yeah. That mm -hmm. we forgot, oh, yeah, you're in yeah. this situation where things happen behind you. <laughs> exactly. And I think that that's one of the best things that you can do in, um, in any of these haunts. Mm -hmm. Directing focus is so important because it's not like, film where like we can place the camera wherever we want and we can direct your focus um it's it's more like um and even even a video game even a video game like mm -hmm. you're setting parameters because you're building the world these haunt events are live so like being able to direct people's focus is very very difficult and really? when it's done well it's amazing yeah Summer's <laughs> just like, I'm not about this. Oh, no. <laughs> even the curtain is even more seamless than I thought because I forgot that the jaws of the pumpkin, mm -hmm. like it's like it has these fangs, and those fangs actually almost go with the folds of the curtain, which makes it even like more like kind of past your focus to where you're just like not even looking at it until the um the chainsaw pumpkins come out. The two just bolts. <laughs> God, I love that one Halloween aesthetic. It's, it's so fun. 
It's so it fun. Looks, when you're going into this, everything just looks like one of those old 1950s mm-hmm. Halloween right. cards where it's like everything was drawn, the colors are really vivid. Mm-hmm. It's really pretty if you like Halloween. It's if like, you're Halloween just want to sit like there and live in it for a couple mm-hmm. minutes instead of rushing through being chased by chainsaws. If the characters <laughs> were gone, like... I would love to just, like, slowly walk through the set and just geek out at all of, like, the vintage Hollywood set pieces. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something, too, that, like, um, it's kitschy, and it could have been tacky. It could have been. But everything was so well-placed, and they picked such beautiful pieces that they all worked together. You could tell it was made by people who also love Halloween. Yeah, exactly. So next year you can, like, just walk in circles as you're being chased yeah. by a chainsaw and like, I was oh, wondering, I was like, oh, it's going to stop us if we like get to the tram, the exit tram and like turn around and go back. Okay. I'm like, would anyone get mad at us if we like, my heart, figure I, can't, it. I can't take it. <laughs> yeah, there was like a dog guy. Like, I don't know what's happening, but all right. <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of like, it's almost like a weirdly foreshadowing for like the cat, the cat yeah. people. But I thought it was kind of cool because like, they had all the cars back there, so he's almost like a junkyard dog, but he's kind of like yeah, a yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I thought that was like a really cool idea, especially because like I think someone looked back there and saw the mystery machine and are like, we're gonna do a junkyard dog. It also became a air traffic controller. I guess. Oh yeah, with the vest, like because it's by the 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 plane, like correct. Oh. Junkyard at night, oh. air traffic controller in the day, who knows? He's <laughs> the reason the plane crashed because they have, he d- down. They have oh, yeah. dogs, where, they have like <laughs> humanoid dog monsters working the, um, the as air traffic. Yeah. <laughs> We're creating like a whole backstory for this. Like, <laughs> Take note, Universal. Well, I was tying it to the opening ceremonies this year too because it was a carnival themed yeah. opening. Uh, so I was like, okay, he's a clown, they're carnival, like maybe. Maybe. He's one of the freaks from the freak show. Like they had the the rat girl, and they had the Aww. the. Did they have a pig creature guy? Like a. I don't know if Universal was going that far into it, but my head made that connection. Of. I mean, he is a clown. Yeah. Makes sense. Being... Like, I think I think that it's cool when like a um like a creature fits well enough that like everybody can come up with their own ideas of like why they're there. <laughs> <laughs> Like, some people might not think that far, but, like, I like that he, like, he works well enough for that, for us to have those ideas. The accessibility to uh, draw a fan fiction of your favorite oh, horror yes. and characters. We <laughs> Comment be your best fanfic yes. idea based off of the monsters you Please see. Please do, and if anybody yeah. writes um, Halloween Horror Nights fan fiction, I don't know if that's a thing, Please let us know. This yeah. is the base motel, and then they made they they kind of left it as a motel, which they always do. But I think this worked really well. This almost cheesy, weird Halloween party that went very wrong at a motel. I don't know why That's it's at a motel, w- but That's I can believe it. That's where all the best it. Halloween parties are. I could I could believe that this guy who is dressed as a pimp and who is totally drunk is just like spewing all over people as other people are getting murdered and can't do anything about it. Oh, is this when you got sprayed with the water? That's when I got sprayed with the water. That's what happened is like he was like vomiting and they had like a thing where he sprays out water and we were not expecting it at all. We were like, what? Curious about that. Yeah, this one I was confused too because I saw like she looked. It was a Halloween party because she looked almost like Cinderella. <laughs> and I, like, I don't think Universal <laughs> and Disney it. are doing a crossover. <laughs> no, I I think that I loved the Cinderella too. Oh, why is Cinderella at a motel <laughs> in the middle of the night? I know like, why. <laughs> Cindy, <laughs> we're gonna have to read Lauren's fan fiction about this. <laughs> Oh I want to know your conspiracy. Okay, I used to intern for a circus, and it was like a night oh, circus, wow. like a lot of like women hanging from the ceilings with yeah. fire and Amazing. like snakes. And there was this one event we did where it was like a twisted Disney. Yeah. So we had like all of the different Disney princesses, but oh. they were very like grown up. And yeah. innuendo. Ah. So when I saw that, I was just like, oh. So it's, it's not Cinderella, it's Cinderella. 
Yeah, I'm Cinderella. To the name we had for, oh, Cinderella. That yeah. was it. That was actually it. It was Sin, S I N. Cinderella. That was. Oh. Yeah. That's hilarious. I didn't. That's why. It's, that's why she's at specifically the most. Yeah, I was like, I've been to this. Spot. <laughs> I've been there before. <laughs> she's like swinging down and like she there's sounds sweet. Yeah, <laughs> she, she just didn't get to the part where she like with her dress and has like a full underhander. Yes, the rat string. Yeah, out. I just <laughs> coming out. Oh my gosh, that would be terrifying, but also very I, funny. Yeah, really. I kind oh. of loved this. I kind of loved that like. Everyone's being murdered, and totally the DJ is obviously in on it because he's just like jamming, could not care less as people are like dying. <laughs> DJ of the It's it's fine. I love this. It was like the the section where like okay, so sometimes you can, when you have like a scare actor on like a bed, like someone who has to like constantly flail, that can be done very poorly because it's so hard. Like there's. It's so hard for the scare actor. Like, you mm -hmm. have to have them placed in such a great, like, like specific location. Um, they did a fantastic job. They did a banger job with the, the, the face-off, like, girl who was, like, on the table. That's one of the best ones I've seen. Right? Right? Life. Right? Like, you, you used to do scare acting. Like, how hard is it to, like, have, like, to, like, be in one of those situations? Were you ever, like, on a table like that or, like... I never played a stationary role like okay. that, but I've heard it from a lot of people and seen it up close. Like, you know, it's it's hard and stiff, and it's also like, you know, some people can be, like, mean, too. So it's a very, um, like, you know, like a vulnerable position, but you yeah. want to be, you try to make the most of it. It's not even necessarily, like, the actor or, like, the set builder's fault at all. It's just the circumstance and, you know, what can you, how realistic and, like, dynamic can you make that? It's, it's kind of like mm -hmm. a given like there'll there'll be like a shortcut, but that one like this was the best one. Like ever, I, I don't. I, it's oh, cool. just and like how Lauren like captured it. It was just like perfect because it's just that like was a great camera. Oh. <laughs> Can you yeah. get right at the face? Oh, like, be ah. nice to the scare actors, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> They're working hard. Um, but yeah, like I think that especially like, do you think it was like the face off element itself that like really helped because like. It, it, it's another situation where focus is being directed. Like, the focus is initially on the scary actor who's on the table, and then it's being directed away as the spooky, scary, ghost creature guy, like, takes the face and comes out and is, like, pulling away from that scare actor. It was also kind of directing us away from the space because, again, mm -hmm. like, every new setting we enter, I just want to, like, pause for a minute, take it all in, but there was so much happening that just pulled us through mm. the scene and that face at the end was like goodbye get out yeah go because <laughs> it was like yeah or definitely to jump off of your point lauren like a lot of like controlled chaos where you don't know where to look and then like you know you see the camera where you get her um i think what helped too was like the the actor who was stationary on the table there was a lot of makeup mm. normally i've noticed and oh, the stationary yeah. it's like realistic so the actors don't get a lot of like makeup to blend in even so you yeah. can tell immediately like, oh they're just they're not gonna come out and do anything yeah but it was a lot more immersive than oh, usual okay. which was nice that's a good point yeah i think the makeup like um shout out to the makeup team i think that that really did a lot to bring us into that moment so yeah like all around that was a really good job <laughs> See this, that's where he's Yeah, because I. So gross. Beautiful. Yeah, so <laughs> I agree, past self. So. <laughs> I would be so down to party in the Bates Motel. Um, I would avoid the shower, I think. Yeah. I used to have, like, a, I. That was one thing, like, I did have a fear as a child. Like, every time I went into a shower, like, I felt oh. like I was, like, I was literally, you're, like, in such a vulnerable position. I'm, like, mm -hmm. if somebody came in, how would I escape? How would I grab anything? The floor is slippery. Like, I, you know. Well, like, then you have to, like, take all those fears and proactively prepare for when somebody <laughs> yeah. comes like, in in your most vulnerable moments. Yeah. You, like, grab the rail and just start. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that would actually, that would probably, <laughs> that's such a good idea. Like, okay, so murder survival technique, because usually the shower, like, curtain things are not that stable. 
pull it down, like, get to it first. It'll totally distract (laughs) them, and then you can try to lift and, like, whack them. Or even take a dump. The killer won't expect that, you know? Like... (laughs) Bathroom Bathroom break-in 101. Bathroom, fun bathroom facts. Coming to you. (laughs) Yeah, the cats! Look at that, like, even look at how cute that sign is. Like, that big Mm -hmm. old black cat alley sign. And I think that what's fun is it does remind you of those old, like, vintage, like, little tree did, trees yeah. or, um mm-hmm. artwork and, car- like you said, the greeting yeah. cards. Mm-hmm. Like, things, like, as they age just naturally get creepier because we're scared of our own mortality. So it, it's really fun. It's like an idealized version of Halloween because, like, historical mm-hmm. Halloween isn't all the greeting cards, but it's yeah. like it kind of distilled the parts that we want to remember from it and brought it to a new. Yeah. That's so great. I love it. Chalico, chalico, chalico cats. <laughs> I know, chalico cats. <laughs> <laughs> um... I don't know about you guys, but this is actually one of my favorite parts. Same. I thought I thought the cats were so good. Like, honestly, too, I was like, cats. Like, I was walking up to it, and I'm like, this seems like a mistake. <laughs> like, how do you think... Like, I, I have, like, my own um, cat, Jupiter, and I think she is the so cutest cute. cat in the whole wide world, and nobody can tell me otherwise. So I'm like, how, is, how are these going to be scary? Um, those masks. Oh my god. They're really like detailed. I was detailed. surprised. And it's like, it's too, like, at first it's like, oh, fun and like spooky and stuff. But then when you really look, like, the more you look at the mask, the more disturbing it gets. The more it's like, oh, that is like a, that is, that's not a normal cat, guys. That is like some creature that crawled out of hell and is pretending to be a cat. Just imagine Jupiter just, like, coming up like that, like, Mom. No, don't Mother. do that to me, Christy. Don't do that. Tonight, you wake up with a paw on your chest. But I do. The like, lamp she walks on me in the night, so now I'm going to be all freaked out. She'll lie next to you, put her leg up, turn on the lamp, is like, Mother, I'm hungry. That is, like, that's, like, one of the best, like, masks I've ever seen. Like at Horror Nights at Anywhere. It's I've never so, even seen it, yeah. Yeah, it was so good. It was so strong technically and everything. Amazing. Amazing. I'm a huge fan. Good job, Jellicle Kids. <laughs> I also love these like these little like post-it things mm-hmm. with, like paper I like love. they're so it's so funny too because it's like they're so cute and cheesy and then you have the the creatures coming over and it's like it's fun. It's fun, but also it is scary. Yeah, I didn't notice. Yeah, the eye. I didn't know the eyes bulge out. You're right. The more you look, and then we get into. See, okay, I like that. The that was a good. Thing. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that is what I wanted from Hollywood Harry. Like that scare actor who did the like bow as we came out. A plus plus, a hundred percent. You get like Kaylee's giving you a gold stars. That is what I. That is what I wanted from Hollywood Harry. Just in that little move, like a hundred percent elevated the whole thing. Yeah, it's just like all sorts of creatures are just coming out. I just. I don't. I um. I also loved that the bats were vintage baseball players. Yeah, oh. I. I was trying to work that out in my was, head. Like I yeah. like it, but I don't. They, they were they were bats with bats. Post yeah. below if you like saw them and immediately got the joke, and post even if you didn't like that. I I wouldn't know because like I I thought that that was like. Just, like, a really cute idea. Like, and you it think that so that's cute. one of the strongest things like, um, with this maze is the humor. But what are they doing there? Like, they're in a crash site. So that's what I'm yeah. like, okay, they're bat baseball players mm-hmm. in a plane wreckage with cop cars. I think that's the always, like, the biggest thing. And I don't know if they'll be able to ex- I don't know if you can explain that away. Like, if somebody mm. wants to give us a conspiracy theory, like, go for it. But I think that the the War of the World set piece there is as much like a like a strength as it is a hindrance because every mm-hmm. year you can't change it, so you just kind of gotta work with it. No matter if you've got the Purge going or the Walking Dead or if you've got um, 
Hollywood Harry. You just, there's not much mm-hmm. that you can do with that whole kind of section. So sometimes it's going to make more sense than other times. I think in this situation, I loved the way they designed it. I loved the way they did the lighting this year for that section. I agree. I loved the characters. I don't know that it actually makes sense in, unless you think of it as a world where people have become creatures. So someone, oh, okay. like, oh, we explained it already. It's the dog. The dog right down the lane. They escaped from the, the, from the carnival. There was, like a, there was a nearby baseball field, and they just came to check out the wreckage because they became monsters, too. <laughs> Somebody write this fan <laughs> Those are green masks, too. Because it's almost orangey, too, I see in the plane. And usually it, they just keep, like, the sirens. Yeah, they usually keep the sirens, or they usually, like, they, um, when they did the purge, they played with the red, white, like, mm-hmm. It made so, yeah, lighting yeah. that's also with the siren. I love the pops of orange with, like, in the dark. I think that that's really that cool, great. too. I like the trick-or-treaters. <laughs> I was hoping oh, they would cute. give you candy, actually, but then it's Me like, too. I or ask you for candy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. What did they do? Was I wanted it like some a... sort of sweets exchange to happen. I did too. Like, I don't know if that's a thing that they can actually do at the park, but if they could, I think that that would be really cool. I really liked the stilt walkers. Mm-hmm. I thought that that was cool. Like, I liked, I even liked their, um, biker aesthetic because I feel like it fit in with the motel. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, they feel like they're part they're... of the okay. same world. Like, they're all like, um... <laughs> it all, um, it almost like gives me like both fifty. I mean, it's it's mostly fifties horror, but it always, almost mm-hmm. gives me a little bit later, like eighties too. Like they, mm-hmm. there's a little bit of both, um, mm-hmm. in that kind of biker vibe. But um, I I really liked it. I really liked that it did a hundred percent feel like they're in this same universe. I think that the the skull bikers on stilts were like a good choice. Um, I like that they, I mean, you usually think of, like, bikers, like, low down on the bikes, but I like them coming down. I do. Nobody would expect that. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I see the purple now. Yeah, Yeah, I see they had the kind of cool purple on the, on the back, like, because they were alternating the purple and orange lights, Mm -hmm. and it just really gave that, like, it gave that vintage horror aesthetic, like, it's all part of the same world. It's so cohesive. Um, that's one of the beautiful things about it. And that's the thing, like, I think, so, like, that's the thing that could have gone really wrong when you have all of these different, like, um, set pieces. I've actually seen that before. Mm-hmm. I've actually seen before where it's done very poorly, but that was done really, really well. I, I another, think... Oh. No, go ahead. Go, 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 go. Oh, oh another thing with the lighting is, like, I think this is maybe something a little bit unique to Universal because they are used to film lighting, but mm. they had the fake moon, so everything yeah. had that moon glow, yeah. so that whole, it's outdoors, we just have that blue tint to everything, and it just, because yeah. it's like, I, it was a full moon, but it was not that bright, it was no. horribly overcast, so just having, like, that blue oh. spotlight mm. over, yeah, it just made everything pop. So. I, I noticed the moon glow and I thought it was so cool. I, I actually didn't think about it in terms of like cinematic lighting though. Mm-hmm. I think that that's a really good point that it's probably because Universal has all those really cool film resources that they're able to do that whole like it like where it feels like you're at night almost in a movie. Mm-hmm. Like not just like out at night but out at night in a movie which is mm-hmm. so cool. Oh, before I forget though, um, I do want to talk about too. I really liked the um, the sounds. Like I, I liked the um, especially in that second, the trick or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat. Like I thought that that was like, it was so childish, mm-hmm. but in the worst way. Like so, there's like the whoever like the the voice actors that they got for that. Their voices like has such a like. I don't know, like a sleazy quality to mm. it. I think that's what makes it gross, you know? I think that's kind of something that was working with the whole Hollywood Harry thing. It's like, yeah, he's we're so in a motel. Like, it's he wants to be this eloquent, like, mm-hmm. dapper fellow, but he's really not. Yeah. He's in a motel. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, 
I didn't think of that either. Like, that is actually really... Yeah, it's, like, part of that whole... Character this is, development. This is, like, a whole cinematic universe. Like, Universal, make us a movie about Holly oh, and Harry. Mm. Like, actually insert him. Next time we'll be walking through yes. his sets. Now I want to see this Holly That'd be awesome. Movie. I also love this, and this is kind of what made me think of Trick or Treat, was yeah, the, the, the bus with the, the bus, children in yes. it. Like... That, I love the lighting on them. Like, I think it actually, like, even glows kind of cool and even brighter in the film. But, like, the lighting on, on the kids was so cool and creepy. And then those skull-faced spiders, like, what even was that? Those mutation mutant creatures. Oh, great. Is that from, like, is that a recycled set piece from another? I think so. Yeah. But, I, like, maybe the bus, but, like, specifically the spiders. I don't remember seeing those before. Okay. Like, I don't know if it's made from other recycled pieces. Like, it, it now it, looking at it paused, the skull faces look like they could have been masks that were, you know, yeah, repurposed. Like a Toy Story, like, type of, like... Oh, I was getting... <laughs> oh, yeah! Like, like um, Sid's room! Mm -hmm. They look like they, they look like they could have been made by Sid, which also gives us a childish feel, but yeah! I, I wouldn't be mad if Sid getting Legend was... of Zelda feel. From it, like that's the yeah. The tree. I was just like, but what is this doing here? And then I was like, oh, they're having Nintendo World soon. Is this a hint? <gasps> I I'm so excited for Nintendo World. Yeah, maybe yeah. it's an Easter egg. Maybe no one's <laughs> talking about Pokemon this. Too. We know we'll find out this Well, year. I just wanted them doing? to make sense. I was like, okay, we yeah. have like these mutant animal people, but yeah. this felt more like animal than people. I like both mm -hmm. of your guys' explanations. I like the idea that it's just this kind of childish of, like, taking apart your toys and putting them back together, but in a way that's really, like, not really eerie and sinister. But, yeah, no, I think that I, I really like that idea, and I also like the idea that it could be, like, a Legend of Zelda Easter egg. Maybe, I hope Maybe so. we're the only ones who notice. Like, that's my wish list for <laughs> Nintendo World, is just to walk into the Dooku Tree and, mm -hmm. like... I liked how you wanted to be a hero. I was like not even gonna try. <laughs> Should we get the kids off the bus? That, okay, so as as creepy as I find little kids, that is, I do have that instinct of protect the child, protect the child. That's always good. Had that, I've always had that instinct of like, even when like little children are walking by and like for a moment they're behind their parent, I'm like, are they gonna be okay? Are they gonna dart out into the middle of the street? So like that's also like yeah, I don't I don't know if that's like overly paranoia, but like <laughs> I feel like in this world we have to be vigilant for one another. But like just the fact that it's like you know you're in a maze, you know this bus is staged, and, then and that they are not real children, they are sound effects, and you're still like, should I go into this bus to help them? <laughs> I'm like, I, like if it, if any of them looked, I mean, like real, like if this, if they were like scare actors that looked like children, I would have been tempted to be like, "Are you okay?" And that is. Do I need to call your mom? Universal does in the other mazes, like in Halloween and stuff like mm -hmm. that. There are scare actors calling out for help, and we just walk right on by. Yeah. Like, so it's I'm like, like I always feel bad, and like I'm sorry. Oh, you passed the test of humanity. You have a heart, I have so sometimes. <laughs> So I have all these moral questions now swimming in my head. <laughs> I love those pumpkins. Like, all of the pumpkins on the... I think, I think that was a really great use of jack-o'-lanterns. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes it feels like they're just kind of there to be like, Halloween. But these, because this was very Halloween, this was mm -hmm. vintage Halloween, it felt, they felt like they were all, like, they should be there and they were all perfectly mm -hmm. placed. I can't remember, like, it, it almost, I feel like, looks like a Michael Myers mask, almost oh. like they were making a joke there, um, but I can't, it <laughs> might have a just been a joke. It was a joke. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> joke, a lantern. Cha, cha, cha. We could have, oh my god, we, we could have, like, a pun off space. between you and Summer. Summer's really good at puns, too. <laughs> Summer can win. I'm, I'm not competitive. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. It'll be an ongoing so yearly about, tournament those jack-o'-lanterns like yeah they didn't need to have them there but it was no. just such an added layer and that's why I was like look they're glowing like they with the camera so pretty. yeah no I'm glad that you caught them like as we were going because like they're they're so like 
aesthetically beautiful in the space. Like, mm-hmm. I just can't tell you, like, when you're there, like, how, like, as horrifying as all is, how magical it makes it, too. Like, and I think mm-hmm. that that was, like, the thing I loved the best about this maze. Like, that's one of the things I liked about when they had the Us maze, and that was one of my favorites. When you go into, like, the first, when you went into the first bit, like, the fun house bit, it was so magical. You had that surreal feeling that you were going into another world and when they do these archways right and I think that with the jack lanterns these archways were done right you get that sense of being transported and I think that that's as important for horror sometimes as it is for fantasy well we are mm-hmm. entering like they want us to be joining in their mm-hmm. vision in their fantasy so it's like it is horror but mm-hmm. if we're not buying into it yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then what's the point? Mm-hmm. I was gonna. Well, I was just gonna add that. Like, I think that the twenty twenty two overall theme of what you said, like the carnival, really does help like bring everything together because it's like, yeah. and it like seeps out into other parts of like the mazes and the scare zones because it is like that element of chaos. But you know, in the carnival, dark carnival, you're being invited in, yeah. so your your mind is already kind of like being set to like anything can happen, and you don't necessarily like think too i mean the you know the justifying is part of the fun right yeah. but we're not like being like oh well the batch with the batch i didn't understand the pun at all like we're yeah. not being curmudgeon-y about it it's part of the excitement and i agree with you like you know like working at universal for like a few years that the tram is like great and they put a lot of work into it but, be, but because it's such a journey yeah. and like the set pieces it's kind of hard it's kind of like an inflexible situation sometimes mm-hmm. but they did really great this year. I think that you, you hit on something interesting there, too, in terms of, like, bringing back up Lauren's idea of, like, how the freak show kind of brings everything together. Because it allows you to have varying quality of pieces and allow them to still work. Because mm-hmm. that was something that was interesting, like, going back to the Black Cats. Like, they're just in black unitards. Mm-hmm. But because it's, like, we've got this freak show, um, carnival sideshow effect... Like, we're almost expecting that. We're almost expecting that level. But then when we look at the details on the mask, it's like, oh, shoot. Like, like we were expecting this fun, carnival thing. And so it allows you to have just a basic black unitard and then this amazing, intricate mask. And they still fit together. Whereas, like, if you were doing that in any other context, it wouldn't necessarily work. Yeah. Even if it was, like, the best, like, scary movie ever, it's hard to justify it scary bipedal cat right yeah, yeah. Like, no matter how exactly. good the mask is the just... cat of death <laughs> yeah. we yeah. expect them to be performers like you were even bringing up cats the musicals but then it's like wait but are they like creature performers were they were they performers in their life and then they became creature cats like what happened are they familiars what i don't know but i'm <laughs> for it so and I like, thought we were done here because I could see a tram in the background. I was yeah. like, yeah. oh, that's it? Oh, like, you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, here we go. Like, this chainsaw is going to chase us onto the tram, but oh, we yeah, weren't this safe. Like, they all did more. No, because like, there's always, like, a line for the tram. So, yeah, you get stuck, which is kind of cool. I actually think, because um, sometimes they really double, triple, quadruple down, it seems like, on the chainsaws. Like, maybe they usually have more. I felt like... Maybe this is a scaredy cat talking, um, but I felt like that was the perfect amount of chainsaws because um, as someone who runs from the chainsaws, I still had mobility. <laughs> like, I was still able to, like, move. I saw, yeah, you both. Um, and that could be, too, like, sometimes the, like, if you go later in the night, the terror tram gets a little bit more backed up, so it could be just we went early and so there wasn't as much of a crowd. Um, but I liked the ability that like I liked that I could be scared but also I could get away from them. I think that that was nice in and I think that was partly cuz they stayed in like a specific section. Um but I think that also it's cuz they didn't I don't know if they had less chainsaws. I I don't know if it that's looked right. Like it kind of less. felt like it. So you should add more. For <laughs> <laughs> they were all yeah. in that for a lot like as we came in. Like I yeah. remember walking into the park and it was just like nothing but chainsaws until we got to the carnival area. So. Yeah. But I think they have because it's like a long stretch of wall- walkway that's actually really smart to have a lot of chainsaws there. Yeah, it because, chases you in. Yeah, mm-hmm. well and then and no matter what section um you're in of that like long walkway, you're already getting the experience. They're already bringing you in. Mhm. But yeah, um, 
So I that was the, pretty much it. Like that was the terror chair. Well, what? No, 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 no. You got me. No. 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 Yes. The the epic most epic of crossovers in your book. It is worse for Summer though. It's like way worse for me. I was just like losing mm. and laughing at you guys. Um, I don't. Th I think you're not the only one who finds her screaming funny. There was like a in the in the weekend it's maze. Fine. Like it's just the, like you're running away, but there's nowhere to go. <laughs> But the tram the pulls away. No like, it literally, as you guys were going towards it, oh, yeah, it was a cop away. Yeah, and it was a cop like, like, <laughs> Still like, I'm like, goodbye. Goodbye. There goes our escape. Well, bye now. So, what are you like? What are our last thoughts, you guys, on the terror tram? No. No. Like, no. Like, it's like about an the eerie vibes. comedy. Like, that's, <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it's like, ear, it, it's spooky, eerie. Kind of scary, but it, yeah, like mostly about the weird alien vibes, which I like. I like this, movies like that. Happening. That's what's going on with the animals. They got mutated by the aliens. <gasps> oh! Oh! Uh, everything that we went through with Hollywood Harry actually happens after the events of the Note movie. We'll just put like Charlie Day, like the meme of just like, ah, oh, it's this. And all those notes and those That's, why there's, that's <laughs> also why there's killer clowns from outer space. The whole thing it's is an alien girl, invasion. Girl, and I'm in on it. <laughs> it's all one big alien invasion. Oh my god. <laughs> Like, I need a shirt. Did they so have the cool. shirts? It was so cool. We didn't do any merch shopping. Yeah, because they were they they're selling the shirts. So I was they're gonna ask, do they have the? the shirt? Sh yeah, I okay. need a Jubler's claim maybe shirt. Should, maybe we should go. Like, should we go back and do a food and merch day? Are you get? Would you guys be interested in that? Because like they I had vegan go tacos, <gasps> and I want them. I got really jealous finding oh out about that my later. I got well, okay. <laughs> We're gonna make a date with this. <laughs> Taco Day. Part we're gonna go, we're gonna get Christy a Jupiter's Claim t shirt. We're gonna get us some vegan tacos. I need it. I'll have some too. <laughs> vegan food stuff. It's just such a cool set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't believe they added it to the park. It was awesome. Like, because they do mention it at the end. Oh, of the and I love like the music here too, like how it was like this pulsating build yeah. that was like mm -hmm. it felt really like the eerie. music was kind of pulling us too. No. Oh. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> me out. I hate it. I liked yeah. all the carnival games in here. It tied so well to the beginning it of did. the show. Were you able to go up and like, or is I it just like actors? To, like... But there were actors behind it uh, to scare us. So I was darn. like, I wanted to like pause for a minute and actually play the games because they looked They looked fun. They looked like you tactile. could actually play them. But yeah, I don't think we were supposed to touch any of that. Well, like I'm trying. I wanted one of those school plushies. Yeah. I would have I would hug it and love it and keep it forever. Oh, here comes the cowboy. See so that walk. Stuff. That walk. I hate that walk. Like when when she does that uh, side shuffle. You thing. mind if I sorry. I hate it. I hate it. I don't know why. I feel like ah uh, oh it's a, yeah it's a starlet it's okay so it's Weird. we're not gonna like it because of yeah we're driving meat forms and it unnerves <laughs> us I'm sorry we're having you relive this but it's will be worth it <laughs> yeah we're just trying to take yeah I was like oh, I was like okay. <laughs> See, and I want to say to you that, like, I think he said this there, but I am so impressed with all of the scare actors there because they're, they're just working committed. with themselves and, a, like, a, a pair of scissors. So you have to commit, and every single one of them was fantastic. Like, especially, like, even the one that came out, like, that I didn't see that came out from behind the, like, um, the little booth. Like, timing, fantastic. The one right next to her where she was just like, 
amazing. Like, I, like, all of those together, and then again, the block, ugh. I've heard they've had intensive personal training. Those actors really? all say, please, maybe, we'll see whether to admit this or not, but well, yeah. I mean, no, I think that we should talk about that, like, we... Um, we won't talk about, like... I, I've heard. I heard through a birdie. Uh, through the grapevine, yeah. they've had, like, a training. But, you know, acting is a craft. Mm -hmm. I think that's sometimes what people forget, because acting, it looks so natural. And there are some people born with acting talent, like, like anything else. However, most people, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of study. Um, Tell just, me about it. Yeah, okay. just, to be, yeah, just to be natural on camera, just to be able to, like... Talk to you guys, like, even, like, and you'll notice this, too, like, if you see YouTubers who, like, start out, like, and they're, like, like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you're great. You're doing great, <laughs> You're doing awesome. No, yeah, you are don't good. Don't get afraid. You uh, are fine. You'll notice, like, through the years, they probably get, like, more natural. They probably speak more fluently. They probably are able to get their ideas across in, like, a more succinct manner. Because it takes effort. Like, even that is a form of artistry. And so, yeah, like, I, I want to give, like, those scare actors, like, a lot of kudos for, like, all of the work they put in to be able to do that. Because you don't just do that and are amazing and creepy. That does take work. And so, again, kudos to you guys um, for being awesome. <laughs> We did it now. Oh yeah, okay, that's really sad. Um, but I did like okay before we like end. I I, I love that um actually the sign and I I didn't talk about it first because there was the creepy fucking girl. But um <laughs> that big flashing neon sign, what a cool lighting piece. Mm -hmm. Like how like you know fun and also also sinister because it gives you like the same as how the motel vibes like give you that kind of sense that something is wrong because the light is flickering. It's blaring as it flashes at you, but you still get that earring sens Was sensation. Was it in time with the music, like that pulsating? Uh, let me, let's check. I feel Go like it me. might have been, because it's like you can feel it in your chest, like that rumbling. Mm. It does sound like electricity. It is. Like it, they have an electricity sound effect, and then it's also in time with music. The star lasso experience. I was part of the film. I didn't even notice that. I didn't even notice that they were awesome. using the same music. Good. I was distracted by the scare actors. <laughs> but yeah, I As didn't you see that. Be. <laughs> they were directing our focus. <laughs> but yeah, I um I think that this year the terror tram was phenomenal. I think lighting, sound, um, sound effects, music. Uh, the scare actors, the costumes, it was all working. Like, I didn't see anything that I didn't think really... I, I, there was nothing, like, really blaring that I'm like, this is not working. Other than, like, at the beginning when we thought, like, there could be, like, more of a story as to, like, why... why she was helping. Yeah. yeah. But I think that, like, in in the grand scheme of things, that's actually, like, a, a small thing that wasn't mm -hmm. working and something that otherwise, like, everything else really tracked. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's probably one like I haven't been hey guys thanks so much for joining us for our analysis of the terror tram I was really and excited and impressed by everything they did I think the thing that stuck out stuck out to me the most were the cat masks I thought those were so brilliant so well done and again it was something that like especially with the unitards I wasn't expecting them to be so eerie and so scary and so that is like my number one thing uh what do you guys think uh, I love the vintage Halloween design. I felt like it tied the whole aesthetic together. It tied it to the rest of the park. Mm -hmm. And it tied it to the other mazes. I loved everything, but the Nope and Us crossover was... Re I don't use the word epic a lot, but it epic. was that. It was epic. <laughs> I, I totally agree. So, like, what do you guys think? Like, of all of the things that you noticed in the Terror Tram, what most excited you? What inspired you? What did you think they just did so well. Uh, let us know in the comments below. Um, and again, if you want to see more of these videos, like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Tell Bye. your friends. Tell your friends. <laughs> yeah. Friends, I love friends. the way you did that. <laughs> Tell your friends. <laughs>